exploring the bizarre. bizarre. Your e-ticket ride into the world of the paranormal. Strap yourself in as we traverse the universe exploring the unexplained UFOs, UFOs, UFOs ghosts, ghosts, lost worlds, lost worlds cryptozoology, cryptozoology, as well as other dimensions. dimensions. It's time to take back the night. Back the night. Back. Now, your electrifying hosts of Exploring the Bazaar, Timothy Beckley and Tim Swartz. Me and my shadow Strolling down the avenue Me and my shadow Not a soul to tell Tim. our troubles Tim. to Tim, mm-hmm. why are you yeah. singing a song? Why are you singing a song about shadows? Well, can't you see? They're all around us with their mm-hmm. tall hats and long hands. They're creeping and crawling and coming towards us. Uh, oh, okay. Well, I th- I thought you were going a bit daft there, but uh, but yeah, I I see what you mean. I I guess you thought your singing would uh, would keep them away. I I know it's doing a number for me. Well, maybe we should get back to the uh, KCRR radio station where um, it's bound to be safe. Ah, damn, you're right. Tina could always hit them with one of her ten pal bowling balls. Oh, no, come to think of it. Oh, no, come to think of us. Uh, they wouldn't work their shadows, and they would be immune. Oh, me and my shadow. Are you still there, Tim? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm, <laughs> the I, shadows I, I, got you. The, the, sh- question the, is, are you, yeah, the question is, are you all still there? That's uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, after that, I think we lost both our guests. So. <laughs> well, they'll they'll be on. Well, in fact, Tim, how you been? Hey, I've been doing uh, uh, all right. Uh, just, uh, uh, I know that, uh, that you said, you know, you may be a little bit, uh, uh, under the weather, but, uh, our, uh, our whole state has been under the weather this past week. I think we've got, uh, more rain this, uh, this past week than we have the last uh, two months. Well, well, we had the great, you know, I remember in one of my uh, books years ago, I, uh, psychic and UFO revelations in the mm-hmm. uh, last day, in the last days, we talked about New York city being underwater. Well, New York City seems to be pretty immune, but boy, you, you go to the suburbs and some of these towns. Uh, I mean, they were they were really they were really submerged. And usually, outside of a few towns like Bound Bound Brook. Now, I ask you, why would you have moved to a town like Bound Brook, New Jersey, and not expect that every once in a while you're going to get flooded out? Must be the founding fathers of the uh, the city knew something, right? Uh, Bound Brook, yeah. <laughs> But that, that, it's a pretty bad uh, flooding, and um, uh, of course we're we're well above uh, ground here in our skyscraper. So, uh, head house. Well, yeah, and all of that. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're about what twenty, thirty stories uh, up, aren't you? Oh, oh, at least, at least, yes. Uh huh. And, and it takes a, about an hour and ten minutes for the elevator to get up there. And, <laughs> yeah, and I have, and I had a, and I had a walk this week because the elevator oh. was out of service. Oh. oh. Oh, I'm sorry to hear uh, that. <laughs> yes, yes, and and I and I was carrying up all the um, uh, all the real the real tapes from the old uh, uh, exploring the bizarre show, so you could imagine uh, that kind of held me down. Yeah, we got to get those. Nobody we, believes it. Nobody believes that. Uh, I we got we got to get those converted to a digital format. Uh, I, I, well, I'll I'll be sending them to you soon. Oh, anyway, okay. who who are we going to be talking to this evening? <laughs> well, Tim, uh, we're we're really lucky tonight because uh, we have two fantastic guests, it's, and it's beyond a shadow of a doubt that they're uh, that they're excellent guests, and it's going to be a wonderful show. Well, first off, we have Heidi Hollis. Uh, uh, Heidi is a uh, an old friend of uh, of both of ours, and uh, I think uh, I think this is uh, her first appearance on uh, exploring the bazaar. So I'm really happy uh, that uh, she could uh, be with us here tonight. So now, no author can say that they've named and defined two paranormal realities like Heidi Hollis. Uh, Heidi is a truth seeker of the unknown, and she considers herself as someone who has been there, seen that, experienced it, freaked out, found some answers, wrote about it, got over it, 
and now helps others do the same to understand this strange world of ours. Now, she is the world's foremost expert on shadow people and the hat man phenomena, and actually gave them uh, both their descriptive names in her best-selling books, The Secret War, A True Story About a Real Alien War and Shadow People, and The Hat Man, the true story of evil encounters. Now she's collected thousands of reports of these beings from all around the globe, along with various other mysterious experiencers that uh, trust to share with her seeking her direct advice. Now, um, uh, her other acclaimed books and wide range of knowledge on mysteries expand into cryptozoology, ghost, poltergeist, ancient mystery, spiritual warfare, uh, angelic encounters, psychic phenomena, possession, and uh, it just it just goes on and on. Now, her newest book is a picture book for all ages, I See Shadow People, and the Hat Man detailing on how to stop shadow people and Hat Man encounters with a sense of humor and colorful comic for all ages to enjoy. Now, Holly is also a lively uh, radio talk show host of the Heidi Hollis, the Outlander show on LNM Radio Network Studio B, After Hours AM on iHeartRadio. And uh, um, let's see, what is this here? Uh, she's also a cartoonist. Oh, yes, I have to remember. Uh, uh, she's got just this absolutely fantastic cartoon called the uh, the outlanders which uh, you know just google it and you can find it i love the outlanders and anybody who reads it i think uh, uh, they'll they'll love it too so it's it's great uh, to have holly with us tonight now also with us tim uh is uh, nicole canfield nicole is uh, uh, another this is her first time on exploring the bazaar and hopefully uh, as with holly this uh, will not be her last time now nicole the otherworldly oracle has been studying the paranormal her whole life and writing about it uh, for uh, uh, eight years her main topic includes ghosts demons fairies mystical concepts and paganism nicole grew up in an old haunted house in historic southern maryland where she encountered ghosts and elementals on a regular basis her ghostly experiences have fueled her passion for seeking the supernatural and finding answers to some of life's plaguing questions and she has assisted hundreds of people in eradicating unwanted spirits as well uh, as well in their spiritual pursuits believing the uh, paranormal and mystical realms are one and the same and nicole writes of uh, both openly to encourage others nicole is registered nurse a certified uh, uh, reiki level two practitioner and an author of fantasy novels her recent fictional works include the dream canvas and the uh, Cotton Family series available on Amazon. So, Nicole, Holly, thank you very much for uh, being uh, Heidi. I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I get that all the time. <laughs> oh, I bet you do. I bet you do. Oh, uh, great to be here. Of, both thank of you. you. Thank you for being with us tonight on Exploring the Bazaar. Thank you. Well, yeah. you know, I, I've got to, I've got to say something here. A disclosure, a bit. Um, my sister who's deceased now, used to see uh, shadow uh, people. Well, in fact, uh, Heidi, I want you to give a definition of what a shadow person is, but uh, mm -hmm. let me explain. She would be sitting in the living room, and, and from there she, in her recliner, she could see into the kitchen. And she said that she could see this shadow uh, of reflection, uh, or maybe the shadow, I wouldn't call it a reflection, up against mm -hmm. the re refrigerator, and it would disappear into the wall between the refrigerator and the stove. So it had to be a pretty narrow shadow, I would uh, <laughs> uh, guess. But uh, wh yeah. where did the, I mean, sh of course, people have been frightened of their shadows for, mm -hmm. uh, for a long, long time. And uh, they've certainly been frightened of other people's uh, shadows. I mean, that's one of the mainstays of uh, horror movies. Yeah. Uh, even going back to Tim to what Nesferado, we always saw the the figure on the uh, on the wall. Uh, sometimes oh, yeah, not yeah. even see, not even not even seeing the uh, uh, the uh, so called uh, monster. But uh, Heidi, give us a little background uh, as far as the occult uh, aspects of this all goes. 
Uh, well, the shadow people, these things are shape-shifting mass. Uh, I gave the definition of, of several different shapes that they could take, which are shadow spiders, which are the most common ones that I personally mm -hmm. experienced. Uh, yeah, nasty. It could be in multitudes of many, many, many tiny little shadowy black spider things, or most commonly like big tentacle sprouting shadow blobs um that's a that's a pretty common one and then there's one that i called head and shoulder shadow which are these things that are kind of shaped like a person but it's like this uh, its head is directly connected to some broad shoulders and they you may see some glowing red eyes coming out from it but um and then you see shadow streaks shadow clouds those are what i categorize as being more of a shadow being. Um, I used to, in the beginning, I categorized something I called the hat man shadow. Um, but I now just refer to him as the hat man. He is um, something that it just could take your breath away and having experienced him. He is very much solid and he can be solid black, but you could literally reach out and touch him as I have once done um, and shoved his hat in his face and threw him to the ground. But anyways, um, Whoa. <laughs> it's, right, uh, way to go. <laughs> it's just, it's crazy. I've never, I, that was just recent, just, uh, I will have to go into detail on that in a little bit, but yeah. so the hat man shadow, he, uh, the hat man, I, I should just say hat man. He, if you see him uh, clearly, you can see a three piece suit, a cape or a trench coat, a top hat or a gaucho hat are the most common. Sometimes he doesn't wear any hat and God forbid you see his smile. It is something of horror films, jagged, sharp teeth and, his eyes can be solid black if you see his skin, but usually glowing red eyes and um, just a sinister presence. And he can be quite tall. I've heard 12 feet tall, even bigger sometimes. Yeah, but you knock his hat off and he, you could get him down the size, I bet. Well, the hat, I mean, that seems mm -hmm. to be uh, his uh, uh, outstanding feature. Is the yeah. hat always the uh, the same? No, it, it changes. Um, I've heard everything from a cowboy hat. Um, to, yeah, isn't that funny? To a little derby cap, uh, to no hat. But the most common is the gaucho, flat-rimmed, like Zorro-looking hat or Freddy Krueger-looking hat. Um, and then there is um, the top hat. And it seems when he has the top hat on, he'll wear a cape. So he changes mm -hmm. it up. Sometimes people have even seen, like, pinstripes on his pants. So... Uh, yeah, interesting combos that he uses, but well, sinister. That sounds like Uncle. That sounds like Uncle Sam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, you're He's, right. It's the ta it's the tax collector. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy! That would run, be less threatening. Run, run, run and hide for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but the the practices of shadow beings and Hat Man are quite similar. Uh, they both pounce on people's chests and choke them out and um, paralyzes them and uh, but uh, shadow beings they might whisper things or growl hat man he might do the same but he he speaks he can speak straight out to you and it's something you'll never forget it's the most deep guttural voice you'd ever heard and uh, quite threatening very threatening well, what what does he want well the number one thing that he loves to grab is while you're lying in bed is reach into your chest and pull your soul right out of your body. Um, oh, yeah. And, and I thought we, we just did a, a book recently called screwed by the aliens where aliens are hopping around, uh, you know, uh, uh, midnight invaders and stuff like that. And I thought that was bad, but I, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't think I want, uh, uh, a, uh one of these, uh, shadow people or hat men uh, coming yeah. into my bed and stealing, yeah. stealing my uh, soul. Although some people might say, they sold it a long time ago, but yeah. know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm searching for it. I'm looking for it uh, back. Uh, 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 Tim, ha have you ever had in, in, uh, encounters or heard of encounters with the uh, uh, shadow people? Oh, well, I mean, naturally I've, you know, I mean, what, what out there, Tim, haven't, uh, haven't I heard, <laughs> heard about and written about, but, you know, it, it was interesting though, that, uh, you know, Holly, you talked about the, uh, uh, the, the, 
the spider shadows and things like that. Cause I, I went through a period when I was, uh, when I was a teenager where I was having, and you know, I, I, you know, it, it could have just been, you know, what is the, the hypnagogic, hypnagogic types of, of, uh, okay. uh, situations where I would see, um, spiders in my room, but they, they weren't just like, you know, little spiders. They were like, you know, very, you know, huge, uh, uh, bird eye Gordon types of, uh, <laughs> giant spiders running up the curtains, uh, yeah. coming up, coming up over the edge of my bed. And, yeah. Well, same know, here. I, same uh, here. I, 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 I ran into those a couple of times when I hadn't slept for about three days, <laughs> uh, well, uh, which, uh, which, you know, kind of brings us to the, uh, uh, to the point are hallucinations really hallucinations or are we peering into the, uh, the some other, uh, uh, domain? Of course, spiders have always kind of been freak people out. I mean, I, I've, I've had the friends of mine, uh, who would see a, a spider and they would, they would become paralyzed. There was a, a, a gal who, was a UFO abductee. Now she could go into outer space with the uh, uh, Venusians or something, but if she saw a spider on the wall here, she would freeze until I took a, a broom and uh, knocked it down. We're not talking about it. We're not talking about a tarantula. We're talking about a little spider. I mean, yeah, uh, to me, nothing like that kind of freaks me uh, out. I wouldn't say. And Alice Cooper, of uh, course, and in, in, include oh, yeah. the spider fact and, uh, and, and spiders, I guess, are, are something that a lot of people. So now, do you think that the these uh, uh, beings are they out to frighten us, or would they like to have some sort of a dialogue uh, with us? Uh, I mean, just because they're <laughs> they're shadows and guys with tall hats, uh, I mean, they could have different agendas, just like the uh, ultra terrestrials do. <laughs> um. Oh, these these guys, uh, the shadow beings themselves, they take their orders from the hat man. Um, so you may see them side by side and also in conjunction with so-called alien beings too, the greys, the reptilians. Um, they may they get seen right alongside of these shadow beings as well. So um, their ultimate goal is to feed off your negative energy. I mean, they really mm -hmm. they really do try to get you get the juices going in you to scare you to mm -hmm. death and and take it from you um yep. hat man he is he's looking for dedicated workers <laughs> he's looking for a oh, lot I, I, out I, of if, I, if i saw a guy with a, a, hat, a hat in his hand around this neighborhood i think he'd be looking for a handout no oh, <laughs> i think oh, he'd be boy. surprised some of the stories that i've come across that's uh really horrific stuff and it's in the thousands Whoa. i mean terrible well, how, how do people? Uh, uh, do most people find you that have a uh, uh, a story of this type or through your show? Or I guess you've written a uh, mm -hmm. number of books on the topic now. Yeah, um, uh, through my show, or or when they go to Google uh, or even Wikipedia, uh, there's mentioning of my work, and I still get almost on a weekly basis somebody saying, "Wow, I thought I was the only one," uh, and it, it doesn't matter, doctors, lawyers, businessmen. They're all writing. Uh, I, I just I got an email from Transylvania the other day. I'm like, mm. hold on. <laughs> it's like my goodness, speaking, you know. Speaking of Nesferatu, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah oh, so oh. it's no That's limit. Awesome. It, it blows my mind. Uh, the people that reach out and are just like, wow, thank you for putting this out there. It's like, it's it's been a it's been a wild ride. It's it's been some time too. I, I first um, wrote my book in '97 and. Uh, and it started to get circulated among other authors and, and whatnot in hopes of getting it published. And, and then finally got it out in 2001. So um, it's, it's been some time and lots of people just pouring. I thought I was the only one at the time when I wrote it. Mm. <laughs> Boy, it's never slowed down. I tell you, the <laughs> influx of emails, it's been crazy. It's funny when, um, you know, you experience something so profound and then you, uh, all of a sudden you, you start doing some research and you realize that it's not just you. It's like thousands upon thousands of other people that are experiencing the same thing. It's pretty wild. Yeah. Oh, trust me. I was floored. <laughs> so, so, so this is a phenomena that is universal, basically. I mean, it, it, it crosses, uh, all cultures and, you know, societies and people are reporting basically the same thing from all over the world. 
They really are. And uh, they called it different things all over the world, too. So there's a certain belief system behind it. Uh, the Native Americans call them Walking Sam and just all sorts of odd nicknames for this guy. Walking mm. Sam? S-A-M? S-A-M. Mm -hmm. That's that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've had uh, some. And then people have little nicknames for the things that they experience as well. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's been a fascinating um, subject. It, just making my parents proud, you know, naming demons. <laughs> 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 All right. So, okay. Uh, uh, you talk about the, the, the hat man. Now, has anybody ever reported a hat woman? <laughs> uh i've I'm, had i'm serious yeah i mean you know. i've had i've had a couple of people say something about that and uh it's usually this old hag uh short little wretched looking thing that um that's been involved in i mean he directs them all there's a grim reaper looking thing um the shadow beings and the old hag the hat man will literally point at them and tell them to go over there and mess with a person laying in the bed and they're just paralyzed going oh my god don't send that wretched looking woman my way so <laughs> yeah so there's uh, but she doesn't wear a hat um a hood perhaps but um not not so much i just hat. i just encountered her recently actually oh did you yeah you tell. yeah um probably about six months ago i've only been i've only i've had sleep paralysis a few times in my life but uh, a few months back is when uh, I woke up, or I thought I woke up, and I couldn't move, and there was an old woman in the room, and she jumped on me. And uh, I just remember screaming or trying to scream and not being able to, and finally broke loose and woke up fully and was like, oh. <laughs> what does she look like? <sighs> it's hard to explain. Like, I don't remember a, a full... Uh, appearance. I just knew that she was old and raggedy, you know, kind of how small? you described her. Was she really, really tiny or what? Yeah, small. Mm -hmm. Very small. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's her. Yeah, just a, a nasty looking thing like you wouldn't want to mm -hmm. touch with a stick. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the old hag phenomena, I mean, that's been written about extensively. And I mean, and we're not just talking about something recent either. I mean, there mm -hmm. are accounts that go back hundreds of years yep. uh, about the old hag. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and sure. You, yeah. Well, and, and, uh, and Heidi, you say that uh, uh, the, the hat man is the, he's the ringleader. He is the one. Or it, whatever you know. Yeah. He's the one that controls it all. He's the one that really kind of directs and points and is in charge of it all. Yeah. And I've had reports come in where they people see dozens of shadow beings in the room and one hat man. One hmm. hat man, right in the middle of it all. And it's like, wow. So it's uh yeah. Pretty pretty disgusting stuff i i know that you're going to go to break here soon but there's a lot more detail to what he does to people uh, well yeah. we want to hear we want to hear about that and we also want to hear about how to defend ourselves yes that's a big <laughs> deal <laughs> uh, we've got we've got less less than a minute to go uh yeah. before we have to go to our well, break well, but what, I, me and to. my shadows <laughs> rolling down oh. Well, when we come back, we'll bring, uh, uh, I mean, you know, Nicole's already come in, but we'll find out a little bit uh, more about our other yeah. guest, uh, Nicole Canfield, wow. you know, when we come back. And uh, so uh, everyone just needs to uh, uh, hang on the edge of their seats. Because oh, hang on. We'll be, hang on. Yeah, yeah. Hang on. That's right. Hang on. Hang, hang on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we'll be back with on, Heidi Hollis. Oh, Timmy, taking my jokes away. Now back to exploring the bazaar with two of the most electrifying researchers in the paranormal. Your hosts, Timothy Beckley and Tim Swartz. And welcome back to Exploring the Bazaar. I'm Tim Swartz, and tonight we are talking with uh, Heidi Hollis and Nicole Canfield. And Nicole, let's uh, bring you up to the mic now. Uh, in your uh, biography, you were talking about that you grew up in an old haunted house in Maryland. Why don't you tell us about that? Oh, my goodness. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> so where I grew up is uh, situated on some farmland. 
mm-hmm. and um, the backyard, a little ways out, there's an was an old uh, train track. So they've since converted the train track into like an actual county trail there that people, you know, ride their bikes and uh, even even the Amish will drive their buggies up and down the trail. But anyway, I think um, the fact that the house was over 100 years old, um, you know, it's seen its share of people living and passing away there. Um, That coupled with the fact that there was a train track behind the house that uh, dates back to the late 1800s. So there was a lot of traffic going um, all through that area. I think those two dynamics kind of mixed. And uh, I wouldn't say it was like a portal or anything, but there was definitely a lot of activity um, growing up there for sure. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, uh, were you seeing uh, apparitions? Uh, yeah. um, well, I wouldn't say that I ever saw an apparition. It was uh-huh. more or less hearing a lot of weird things. Um, we would take pictures and sometimes there would be apparitions in the pictures and we would be like, where did that come from? What is that? You know, there's this picture of me that uh, my mom actually just asked me for it again the other day. But I was really sick and I was like 16 and I'm standing in the living room and, uh, so, you know, someone snapped a picture of me for whatever reason, because I looked terrible in the picture. But um, beside me, looking out the window is the silhouette of a little boy. Mm. And you can see his hair, his collar of his uh, jacket that he's wearing, his ear and everything. And come to find out, I guess a little boy had passed away in the house, um, you know, many years before. So... Um, another related incident to that is when I, uh, first moved, I, I was the only bedroom on the first level. And when I first moved down there from the top level or from the second level, the first night I was hearing like toys, like a child playing like out in the living room. And I think I just remember shutting my door and going, okay, I must be just imagining this, you know, but I was hearing like that, um, kind of like that old school, like bell, like on a tricycle, like a bring, bring, you know, mm-hmm. Um, I was hearing that out in the living room and needless to say, I was pretty freaked out, but, uh, all those things together, we were pretty sure that there was a little boy ghost in the house amongst others. Mm -hmm. Yuck. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, yeah, I I think I'd want to move back upstairs again after. (laughs) You know, (laughs) it's like, like, it's like, you know, you kind of, you kind of live alongside of them eventually. I mean, there's some times where. You know, I'd be walking up the steps and my mom describes this a lot because she still lives there. But it's like you feel something behind you and you just want to shoot up the steps and <laughs> run away screaming, you know, like there's someone right behind you about to to grab you or chase you. You know, it's it's a creepy feeling. But otherwise, you know, it can be fairly peaceful. <laughs> wow, it sounds like Brett Kavanaugh. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Creeping up behind you it might goose you. I don't know. Jeez. <laughs> or, or, I, or, or, or 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 drink you under the table. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. He's a strong drinker. <laughs> really powerful with his drinks. Exactly. Uh, so okay, now now you also said in your uh, biography that uh, uh, you had experience uh, uh, there with uh, with elementals. Yeah. Okay. Um, so now, what's the difference between say, like you know, ghost spirits and an elemental? Um, to me, uh, from what I understand and my experience, an elemental is uh, a spirit that is um, just a nature spirit, basically, whether it's the spirit of a tree or or the land that you're on, or maybe like a guardian spirit of the of the land that you're on. Um, that's what an elemental is to me. So uh, we have a lot of trees out back. And then we had uh, some oak trees surrounding the house. And um, on different occasions, it's like people that have been to the house to stand outside can see my mom describes it as like a, um, like a quick white mist that flies by real quick. And multiple people have seen it um, at the same time, Um, usually darting like between from one tree to another and uh, we had a, a woman that we knew back in the day who was kind of psychic. You know, she's a little clairvoyant. And she pointed out the fact that one of the trees had uh, what she thought looked like fairies or what I would consider elementals kind of dancing from from branch to branch on it. So, yeah, pretty interesting place to grow up. 
and we just uh, uh, the show that we had on uh, last week uh, entirely dealt with uh, you know fairies and changelings and, and, and awesome. things like that. And uh, we had uh, um, Susan Demeter St. Clair. Uh, she she was telling us that uh, uh, she had been approached by this uh, woman who. Just had recently moved to Canada from uh, Colombia, the, the the country Colombia, and was seen you know, seen fairies at a at a nearby park, mm-hmm. and you know that it, this was not something that uh, was you know uh, part of her experience, and she was mm-hmm. kind of wondering if this was you know okay now does everybody see these things in Canada? Right. <laughs> and she, yeah. uh, so she was kind of surprised, you know, and uh, uh, you know uh, Susan told her, "It's like nope, nope, you know you're." <laughs> <laughs> this this is not something that everybody around around here sees. So. Well, you, you know, I, I I have to ask why why are why do certain people attract anything from hat man to shadow people to to fairies, and others can go through their whole life without uh, being bothered by uh, anything. Hmm. Who's that for me? Yeah. Oh, either, yeah. You know what? Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, 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 Heidi, you take it first. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that uh, some people are, are just more sensitive to seeing these things and feeling these things. And, and it's been my experience personally, that if one thing sees, you could see them. It's like they call their friends over or something. It's mm-hmm. like, you know, Hey, Heidi could spot us. And, you know, I think I experienced a, an elemental of some sort too. I, I, I just, I have seen ghosts. I have seen demons. I've seen little people. <laughs> I don't know how better. It, and I've had Jesus encounter. It, it's like, what on oh, earth? Jesus. You know, am, yeah. Am yeah, I, you, am, you, you, am you I disapp- a portal? You disappoint, you disappoint me. Well, uh, what do you, anyway. what do you mean? <laughs> Well, I, I don't know. I, I just, uh, I, why, why would Jesus want to hang out with these other, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, does not, he have not, a different message? Does he have a different message? Hang out with who? I am. Well, I don't hear what you no, well, well, the other, you, you say the uh, portal, I would assume they're all coming through the same, uh, well, uh, no. Kind of, uh, oh, no, no. It wasn't like he was hanging out with them. No, no. It was a totally unexpected, totally very different experience than from anything I'd ever experienced before. It was, in fact, I was such a skeptic of those who claimed to have had Jesus encounters. I wrote it in my well, first well, so book. Am I. I guess I, guess oh, I am too. Yeah. I was a huge skeptic. I put it in the first book. I bashed the heck out of it. Like, what is he in your bowl of soup too? You know, it was, I was just really, really hard on it. And, um, I had to eat those words and <laughs> rewrite that chapter and explain myself because I just figured, you know, I'd seen so many odd things in my lifetime that if Jesus were around, I think I would have seen him by now. And I literally put that in the book. I, I was really, really skeptical. Um, I And I would always tell my friends who would go to church, I'm like, say a prayer for me. I'd probably start on fire if I stepped foot in there. You know, it was just, <laughs> just for, just for fun, you know, but I would have never anticipated to have had the encounters that I did. I, I had a, a handful of them and just changed everything. And um, yeah, but totally different. I, but I just think that people, some people are more sensitive than others and um, not, not that they're special or anything. I, I think that everybody has opportunity to see these things, but I think we're too busy. We're, we're not paying attention or my favorite is from the emails I get is, um, I think my eyes were playing tricks on me. I'm like, hold on, those are the same eyes that get you to and from work every day? What? <laughs> you know, suddenly they're just not trustworthy. They're tricky. I'm like, come on now. I think people doubt themselves way too much. And I always get, like, first or second line, so I wasn't drinking, and I, I'm, da- I'm not on drugs, but I saw they doubt themselves, and they take oh, yeah. years to talk about it. And I'm like, mm-hmm. you know, I think there's a lot more going on that people are experiencing. They just don't give themselves credit for mm. So. Well, let me let me just ask you this before we move on from Jesus. How 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 do you know? I mean, how do you define? Uh, how do you know it's Jesus? <laughs> That's what, I get that one all the time. I'm like, I tell people I could have been blind and seen it was him because every cell in my body screamed, "It's Jesus!" <laughs> it was it was that abrupt. It was that uh, just I just in my face. I I just um. It was just, it was unbelievable. It changed everything for me. And it's the reason why I'm, I'm able to do everything that I do, in fact, because I surely didn't have the interest to go forward and, and doing the things that I'm doing now and talking on all these odd topics. But, you know, he 
promised me he'd give me the words and I'm holding him to it. And I say that every time before I do a radio show, <laughs> to be but honest. Yet, 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 yet most people would say that uh, Jesus uh, was opposed to uh, any of this uh, type of uh, the phenomena, considered it uh, witchcraft. <laughs> That, that, I didn't know everybody uh, lived during Jesus's times. I mean, well, I, well I, I'm, I'm just giving, I'm just giving you, I'm just giving you the, uh, the, I guess the fundamentalist. Uh, well, not mm. even just the fundamentalist. So almost any uh, uh, organized uh, Christian religion. I mean, they they uh, come down on the uh, the, the side of uh, any of this phenomena being uh, demonic, and they they would probably say. Uh, I mean, uh, listen, it took uh, years for the Catholic Church even to. Uh, uh, recognize the vision at Fatima, and most yeah. of the other visions or miracles they've uh, uh, claim are not visions well, or I'm miracles. I'm not Catholic. I am not Catholic, yeah. so that is a yeah. whole different realm of systemic uh -huh. things that I don't <laughs> understand. I, I mean, uh -huh. it's just too systemic this abuse. I'm like, I am so not in that. Um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, you know, even in the Bible, what did the, the Jesus was walking on the water, and what did they say? We thought you were a ghost. So it was acknowledged in the Bible, and I'm not a Bible thumper. I, I he didn't yeah. pop up and have a whole heck of a lot to say to me, and uh, I, I just you know all I could do is be as painfully honest as I can, and had to eat my words and be as honest as I could about my experiences with him. And I have to tell you guys, out of I've written, I've got seven books published, and yeah. that Jesus book I put out on my own because my my agent couldn't get it out there and all this stuff and i put it out there on my own it was number one in its category for eight months on amazon what what what, what is the title jesus is no joke because <laughs> that's all i could kept telling my friends because i had a blast teasing my friends who went to church and then to have the experiences that i did i mean they knew something happened to me that i had changed my tune and was like all i kept saying is jesus is no joke he's for real I I just thought he was an, a historical figure that did his thing, and he'd come back someday. But I changed my whole tune. I'm not I'm not ashamed to say it. <laughs> well, well, now how? Okay, uh, uh, Jesus has uh, has arrived or is coming here uh, periodically. Uh, how about uh, UFOs? I mean, are they from the same uh, realm? I mean, we uh, one of our uh, authors is uh, Reverend Barry Downing. Uh, who's written a book, uh, UFOs and Biblical Revelations, that we just recently published. Uh, and uh, he believes that, uh, you know, the uh, angels were real physical uh, uh, flesh and blood uh, beings, that they could come into your house, you could sit there and chat with them and have dinner with them. And uh, they might have uh, piloted the uh, UFOs, and they were responsible for parting the uh, uh, the Red Sea and, and, and so forth. I mean, is there a connection between UFOs and these other beings? Uh, I didn't see Jesus on a ship. I, I, I know there's people who believe in that type of thing. I, all I could do is speak to what I, I'm familiar with. Mm -hmm. but um, And I had several what may have been near-death experiences, and I didn't pop up on a ship to see the angels there either. So um, I think there are beings who work for God, because some of the alien beings that I personally had some uh, encounters with directly spoke of that. And they didn't look like any beings that I've ever heard of or read about anywhere. So, um, and I asked them, Were you, are you guys, what, you, you get called angels sometimes? I said, we've been called many things, you know, we, we speak on behalf of, of the one true source and the, the light source, which is God. And I'm like, oh, okay. So something different. <laughs> So uh, okay. So now, as far as the uh, UFOs uh, uh, go, have you had uh, encounters or uh, sightings? Myself, yes. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I sure did. Uh -huh. Yeah, I wasn't abducted, thank God. No, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, I've I've had some encounters with uh, several. Beings. Yeah, Hi Heidi, tell us about. Uh, I, I know you had mentioned this on. Uh, I think it was uh, when we were on a uh, Kevin Cook show, uh, mm -hmm. the la the last time the. Uh, when you went down into your dark house and the room had some visitors, <laughs> I found oh, that story. I found that oh, story apartment. really. Yes. I found that uh, story really interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I guess I, I, I've shared it on coast to coast. I think a couple times too. And I, I, I lived alone. I woke up to sounds in my apartment 
And uh, my dad always told me, you know, a girl living on the first floor in her own apartment, it's not a good thing. Somebody might break in. I'm like, ha, huh, I had my dad beat. I, I got an apartment that had bars on the window. So, ha, huh, nobody's going to get in here. Well, I woke up to sounds of somebody having broken my apartment. I'm like, oh, my God, my dad was right. And I'm, I'm somebody's ruffling through my stuff, and it's loud. My door is open to my bedroom. And I just thought, as soon as I put my feet down, who's ever in my living room is going to see me. I just have to run like heck to the front door and get the heck out of there because I couldn't get out of a window. And so I put my feet down and I just started running through the living room and I stopped <laughs> midway when I saw who had come into my place and they were the size of four-year-olds. And I'm like, what? You know, I, I'm being invaded by kids. I, and I suddenly, you know, some of the fear leaves me and I, I, and they have their back to me. I'm like, what on earth? Are they? <laughs> Who is this? And what's going on here? I step in between the two of them and their backs are towards me going through a bookshelf of mine and had my stuff in their hands. And I, again, I was in this, this, this panic mode of, I thought I was going to die. And then I see these little kids in there and, and I get between them and I, I say, who are you? What are you doing here? And they turned and turned their heads towards me. And that's when I saw they were not kids and they were these gray alien beings. And I remember, and, and like, I saw the big black almond eyes and the slit for a mouth and two slits for a nose. And, and the mouth was in a circle, like, oh crap, she's up type of thing. Like, and they just froze and looked at me and I'm looking at them and I knew what they were because I had just joined a UFO discussion group uh, and everybody in the group were abductees, but me. I was only one that had seen UFOs and was like, wow, this is neat. I get to listen to all these alien abduction stories. And then lo and behold, I, I see these little stinkers in there and I, I grab my stuff out of their hands. I'm like, put this down. Who are you? What are you doing here? And I heard some noise behind me to make a long story short. There was two more in my walk-in closet, two more in my kitchen. <laughs> and and they're making all sorts of noise. <laughs> and uh, I... I went into the bathroom. Well, the do, we, do we call the uh, exterminator or Bud Hopkins? I'm not sure. This yeah. is crazy. But there's two more in my bathroom. And long story short, I picked one of them up and shook it. <laughs> I just, they, none did, of them were did he, answering did he, did he me. Did he, ra did he rattle? He was, this one did not look like the others. It, I'm asking them all, who are you? What are you doing here? Who are you? What are you doing here? I'm going really fast. I'm like, what's happening in my place? And I open up my bathroom door because the light was on. The door is closed. I'm like, well, heck no. Who's in my bathroom? <laughs> and I see when I open up the door, one of them, I had accidentally knocked him to the floor. And he was laying there with his hands up in, in the air. And he's the only one who thought to answer me um, when I'm asking, who are you? What are you doing here? And there was one that was grabbing, reaching for something on the back of my toilet. And this one had on clothes. The others did not. And it was like a, a tight bodysuit, like almost with suspender like straps. And I grabbed it by its suspenders mm. and I shook it with every word. And I said, who are you and what are you doing here? And the one on the floor, I heard him say, I'm your nephew. I'm your nephew. Huh. And I'm like, I turned and I watched this thing shape shift into my nephew with a big afro and a, a baby blue suit. And I'm like, you're not my nephew. You look like him when he was 10. You know, he's 20 something now. He was almost the same age as myself. And I turned my attention back to the, the other one in my hands. And I, I realized I had scared this thing to death. And this one. Well, it sounds like it scared you to death. Well, it did. But this one looked like a kid, half us and half them. And Ooh. I I put it down and I said, look, and it was shaking like it was short circuiting or something. I'm like, look, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. You guys are all in my apartment. Nobody's answering me. This one's lying. <laughs> he's saying he's my nephew. And it, it just, I, it was crazy. I later realized what they were looking at and what I took out of their hands. The first two, they had my little picture booklet and it had a picture of my nephew, just like that one that was uh, shape shifted on the floor. Like I, I didn't even know that picture was in there. It's just crazy. Well, so. That's like right out of the uh, uh, twilight zone or something. I know uh, <laughs> we've uh, 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 years ago, we did an interview with uh, Dr. C uh, Carla Turner. Mm -hmm. uh, who's deceased now, and she yeah. she talks about. In fact, in the, in our our books and all, uh, 
uh, she talks about how uh, these uh, entities uh, are able to uh, disguise themselves as members of our uh, uh, family and uh, uh, coerce the even um, uh, 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 members of uh, the certain groups that have a sexual intercourse with people that they think was their deceased mate, and and so very 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 weird uh, stuff. But uh, uh. the uh, the stories under hypnosis all seem uh, quite uh, uh, quite uh, similar. But and and if you take them at uh, a face of value, it it really gets uh, uh, frightening. I mean, to say the uh, the least. Uh, wh- which leads me to the next question. How do we protect ourselves? Uh, Well, I say sprinkle a little Jesus on it, honestly. Um, I'm very much about telling people how to bless their home themselves. And these things, why do they respond to that name of Jesus? I think I was one of the first researchers to put it out there to say, you know, say in the name of Jesus, get out, leave me alone. And I've had probably hundreds and hundreds of reports of like, wow, that worked, Heidi. And that works in the case of shadow people, hat man, so-called alien beings. It's like, if they're up to anything good, that wouldn't work. But it does work. So what does that say? And I've heard, uh, I can't remember uh, which... um, which author had said, oh, no, that that doesn't work. The alien abduction was done. That's why it seemed to have worked. So when you said, in Jesus' name, get out, they left. But I'm like, eh, no. <laughs> it's worked for me for years to keep negative entities away. And uh, otherwise, I surely wouldn't be able to talk about this stuff. I, I think Ann Druffel, uh, who was one of the uh, you know original, uh, original investigators uh, for uh, the National Investigations Committee on Area Phenomena, and has written a, a couple of uh, a books, uh, one about, the well, Dr. James McDonald, and also she's written quite uh, widely, uh, extensively about the jinn. I, th- I think she talks about uh, how she raises the name of uh, uh, oh, Jesus really? to, to uh, what's, what's and, her and, name? And I guess, uh, Ann Truffle. Ann Truffle, yeah. okay. Uh, I, I, didn't, yeah, I, you know, I didn't hear her. That's awesome. I'm glad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in, in, in fact, you know, uh, Tim, I don't know if you realize this or not, but her uh, Anne is getting up there, uh, you know, up there in years. But mm. her daughter ha- has uh, started doing uh, lectures and shows and things. So uh, oh, continuing okay. the work. A- right. Anyway, our our shadow our shadow people are coming to uh, block our voices <laughs> here. Top of the hour break coming up here. So when we return, we'll have uh, more with uh, Heidi and uh, Nicole on exploring the bizarre. So stay tuned. Exploring the bizarre. bizarre. Your e ticket ride into the world of the paranormal. Strap yourself in as we traverse the universe exploring the unexplained UFOs, UFOs, UFOs ghosts, ghosts, lost worlds, lost worlds cryptozoology, cryptozoology, as well as other dimensions. dimensions. It's time to take back the night. Back the night. Back. Now, your electrifying hosts of Exploring the Bazaar, Timothy Beckley and Tim Swartz. All right, welcome back to the second hour of Exploring the Bazaar and our host tonight, our host tonight, I'm your host tonight, myself and Tim Beckley. (laughs) Our guests tonight, uh, Nicole Canfield and Heidi Hollis. And we're talking about uh, shadow people, the hat man, uh, 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 pesky aliens going through your stuff in your house, and uh, all kinds of, uh, of fascinating things. And uh, Nicole, I wanted to ask you now, uh, just uh, doing a little research uh, on you, uh, I mean, you've got uh, uh, just articles, just article after article. You're a very prolific writer. Uh, I mean, uh, especially, especially when it comes comes to uh, our favorite uh, subjects. Now, what what got you uh, interested in this kind of stuff? Now, you know, I mean, a lot of people would say, oh, well, you know, because I lived in a haunted house. But I think with you is probably a little bit more than that. Um, it is. I I never stopped having experiences since, since I was, you know, a little girl. So um, even moving away from there, uh, moving to Florida, I had uh, probably what I would consider my first shadow being experience, mm-hmm. um, which had to do with sleep paralysis as well. But 
um, I guess I was about 20, maybe 19. And um, I, if for whatever reason, I just started feeling like there was always something following me or watching me. And I didn't really have a reason to feel like that. But um, I, it was in that like hypnagogic state that you were talking about earlier that I woke up and I was paralyzed in my sleep. It was the first time I'd ever experienced sleep paralysis. And um, there was a shadow man or being uh, staring at me from my window in my room um, from outside looking in. And I just what remember did he being look like um, it, just a, a figure of a man. It, there wasn't like eyes. It wasn't, ah, okay. it, there was no hat. It was just a figure of a man, a tall right. man staring, like right. looking in at me. And, um, I think after that, I, I had another sleep paralysis shadow being experienced probably like five years later after that. But I mean, I've just had, I've just had experience after experience and they don't really stop. So <laughs> I can't really turn them off. Like it, it's more peaceful in my house, um, where I'm living now. And I think it's because on a certain level I can, I know how to spiritually cleanse and protect my home. So, um, you know, I can cancel a lot of it out, but yeah, my experience has never really stopped. And so I just started writing about it and, um, putting it out there and come to find out a lot of people have the same experiences. So it's pretty cool. And we have a, uh, um, a question and this is for, you know, for both of you and, you know, uh, both of you can give your interpretation. Uh, Jerry wants to know, uh, the hat man, is it the same hat man or are there many? I've wondered that myself. <laughs> oh, yeah, I hear you. Um, the, okay, for the most part, I've only received a handful of people who say they've seen more than one. Um, I am not, it's like the verdict is still a bit out there because um, my understanding is this is the same guy pulling the same stuff everywhere, but sometimes he's clean shaven, sometimes he's got a goatee, he changes his clothes. Um, but the this is the weird thing to me. I, I really believe he's trying to put the message out there that he exists. Because if he didn't want to be recognized and be known, he'd hide. But he waits till you, you see him in the room and mm -hmm. then approaches. He is purposefully waiting to be seen and recognized and wearing that distinctive hat or having that distinctive presence. So mm -hmm. people are connecting the dots to know He's on the prowl. And um, so I, I think that, uh, you know, if, if there was a ton of different ones, I'd surely would have had a lot more reports over the years. But it's probably been just a handful, maybe five over all these years that people say they've seen more than one. But mm. I mean, but and then there's that argument of, well, how could that be, you know, that there's just the one? I'm like, well, God could be everywhere. And if this is the opposite to, uh, to God, it, can he be in more places than one? I, I believe so. Because he will claim to be the devil when he speaks to some people. But then again, you know, you, you go and, and look at, say, like old uh, 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 demonic mythologies where, you know, the, uh, the, the demons all will just, you know, jump to claiming that they're the devil. No, I'm the devil. No, I'm the devil. You know, it's just that, that seems to be a favorite motif to put the scare in people claiming to be the devil. Well, he, he won't just say the devil. He says his name is scratch, which is the old Norse term, you know, mm -hmm. old scratch for the devil. But, um, he'll just say, you know, oh that, you know, Jesus thing. And he won't, he won't say the name Jesus. He says that your religion won't work on me and things like that. Um, he tries to get you to doubt things, but, um, well, yeah, the religion wouldn't work on me either, but I'm not the devil. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I suppose I, I, I it, to me, you know, it, these, these beings, they certainly have the ability to, uh, uh, lie to us and, uh, mislead us. Sounds like a, a politicians I know. Well, <laughs> he, he's working his, his darndest to let people, but you know, I'll tell you this for the longest time, for many years, there was no name given, no nothing given. And for the most part, he doesn't give a name. Um, but the presence 
speaks very loudly. It's just like when I had the encounter with Jesus. He didn't say, hey, Heidi, I'm Jesus. I, my, my cell and my soul recognized who was there before me. And people would ask me in these emails, who is he? He's the devil, isn't he? They would answer their own question all the time, all the time. And it wasn't like the, the name was given. They just knew from that presence. They recognized him. So are are they all, would you say they're all under the jurisdiction or uh, of either the devil uh, or of the, let's just say the creator for short? Are, are they all under the jurisdiction? What do you mean? The jurisdiction, in other words, are they, are, are all these entities that, uh, that we uh, see in contact, I mean, they're all part of some either negative or, or a, a positive force? I mean, they, I, they can't be independent operators. Oh, well, a band of thieves never got along really well. Um, I think that they do essentially have a, a common goal, um, though they may not always be very perfect in the way that they go about doing things. But for the most part, yeah, there's on one side of the fence and then the other. But uh, I'll let uh, let uh, Miss Canfield here take the question, too. <laughs> yeah, um, by all means. I would say there's definitely spirits that are of a more darker or evil nature, and there's definitely spirits that are more of a um, protective, angelic type as well. But I do believe that there are some neutral spirits, and those would be the spirits of the land for me, uh, elementals. They, oh, yes. They, in my opinion, they kind of they have their own set of rules, and they don't really... They don't follow uh, our concept of evil and good. They more or less have, you know, their goals of protecting the land or um, helping things grow or whatever it has to do with nature. And and they don't. Um, they can be very mischievous towards human beings, um, but uh, and, but they can also be very helpful. So. Yeah, I think they're kind of neutral. They're somewhere in between. I don't see them as, as either or, if that makes sense. So you're talking about uh, gnomes and fairies and yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, trolls yep. and... Um, yeah, all those other, nature spirits, yep. Yeah, but that's that's just the names that we've given them. Right. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if you've ever, I don't know if there's ever been cases. Well, I mean, there may have been, you know, where, you know, the fairies would be like, hi, we're fairies. You know? No, they don't call themselves. <laughs> <No>. that. <laughs> Aren't they un, 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 undines or something? That's a water elemental. Um, oh, but see, yeah, hey, I, I, yeah. I'm so familiar. Sprites. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? Sprites. And, um, well, we, I, I remember we, we had a fellow, uh, now deceased, uh, by the name of Bill Cox, uh, he wrote a, um, a book for us, uh, the Pyramids Speak, and he he was probably, as far as I know, well, him and his uh, 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 wife were probably the uh, the leading authorities on that kind of uh, you know uh, the phenomena, and they had they had not only photographs but a lot of testimonials from people and the uh, spirits of the trees, mm -hmm. and of course the Green Man. Oh, I'm so glad you brought that up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hey, uh, you know, my, my knowledge is extensive. Well, what, what did you tell us about the Green Man? Because I, is that primarily uh, British? Uh, no, no. The Green Man, I think, is worldwide. Um, he is definitely the, uh, I, don't, I, I don't know if I would say omnipresent, but he is the spirit of the woods and, like, the main protector of the woods. So my mom has actually recently had some um, experience along with me, uh, we took a trip and, uh, she was taking pictures of the woods. My mom's a paranormal investigator too. So, um, she was taking pictures of the woods where we were at in the mountains and there was some definite green man faces popping up. Uh, they're very evident. Um, it, it's pretty wild. So I think I, I see him as being, uh, kind of like an omnipresent being, but it's just the overall protector of the forest. Um, and if you, if you traipse on some territory that maybe he feels like you're getting too comfortable or you're, you're going somewhere sacred to him, then um, it's possible that he will try to scare you away. So. Well, could, you, could you give us a, a dis description of the green man? Yeah. 
Okay. He's green. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> wow. Tall, tall. I mean, well, he can pop up as a smaller being too, but yeah. usually the green man is depicted or, or seen as a tall man that is covered in foliage of some kind, be it oak leaves or holly leaves um, right. or just leaves of the forest, wherever, wherever you're at, wherever you see him. And uh, that, that he actually dates back. I mean, probably thousands of years. Some of the older churches in Europe actually have motifs yeah, and carvings gonna, of him gonna, on the church. I, I was just going to, I was just going to mention that. And of course yeah. the people's door knockers mm -hmm. are, yeah. are often of the, uh, the green uh, uh, man. I, uh, I, it, it, it's, I, I'm wondering if there's a connection, you know, uh, uh, we have uh, the uh, green man of the, uh, the, wo uh, the woods, but we also have the green man of the UFO phenomena. Which actually, uh, you might kind of like uh, figure that uh, that's uh, trying to be facetious or funny, but <laughs> you know where the uh, the the term uh, "green man" actually came from, as far as UFOs uh, go. Um, it, it had nothing to do with a U, uh, UFO sighting. There was a fellow by the name of Harold Sherman, who is probably one of the top uh, the psychics in the uh, United States. Uh, he he wrote. Uh, it was very popular. He had his own radio show. Uh, kind of like a, a positive thinking Norman Vincent Peale, but uh, included elements of the uh, metaphysics and all in it. And he wrote a book. Well, actually, it was a novelette for Amazing Stories back in the 1940s called The Green Man. Hmm. And the story, the story was so popular that he actually wrote a, a second uh, novelette called The Return of the Green Man. And when we say novelette, I, I don't know. Is well. There are no more magazines, really, so you can't even justify what you're talking about. But in those days, the pulp magazines would have maybe, you know, what, five or six stories, Tim, and then they would have one that took up half the magazine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and which was your your uh, novelette. But, uh, you know, we had copies of that uh, book uh, for a while. I, I knew his uh, uh, daughter, and, and he, he he was well aware of all the, uh, you know, the metaphysical and the cult uh, uh, aspects of that. But uh, a little green, a little green men. I don't know how they, they weren't necessarily little. Didn't really start with the UFO uh, phenomena, because I don't think uh, Tim uh, have any UFO occupants ever been green. Oh yeah, there's there's been some yeah. that's been recorded. Well, we uh, the yeah, Hopkins, especially Hopkinsville. Hopkinsville. The Hopkinsville, yeah. Well, and there were some uh, the uh, South American uh, cases, especially in the uh, uh, 1960s. And then there was a few in the uh, French UFO flap of the uh, the uh, early 1950s. But uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, not uh, uh, not not a bunch. <laughs> yeah. Well, they well, have cleverly there there have been, but of course some of them now too. Their uniforms have been different, uh, uh, you know, uh, colors. Uh, uniforms that may not be the uh, outfit, space suits. Uh, that's the word I'm trying to uh, to come up with. But uh, some of them, of course, don't even wear space suits. But some of them uh, uh, do. Why? Why the color? Okay, are are uh, either uh, one of our guests tonight uh, into leprechauns at all? Mm. <laughs> any, any, I mean, any, any leprechaun. Heidi, how about you? Any any leprechaun stories? Uh, I've got one of something I saw. I'm not a leprechaun, but I guess it was a gnome. <laughs> no, okay. Right. Uh, okay. This is this is bizarre. I I lived in. I shared this apartment with a college roommate that I, I based my book, The Secret War, off from, and we just had so much stuff going on. And and this one night, I woke up because I heard. And like lip smacking, like you know, just like, and and then I felt like a light pressure on my bed, and I I open my eyes, and I see this thing that kind of looked like Gollum. <laughs> <laughs> it was gray in color, but it was like a old tiny little man, just like looking over me, gumming his mouth, like had no teeth in his head, and just looking at me. It's just like, I don't know, like just, just having a, and I'm sinking into the bed, like, oh my God, what is that? And he's really kind of close looking at me, like, I don't know, like I was something from Gulliver's Travels. I don't know. It was so bizarre. And then he just, 
he just kind of slowly looked at me and, and then backed up and walked out of the room. And I sit up and I'm watching him. And I'm like, that's a little gray man. That <laughs> is a little gray man. And then I want to say it was several days later, my college roommate, she, she saw him too. I'm like, it's a little man, isn't it? It's like, what was that? A gnome? I don't know. But he, he looked like a, a regular guy, but really tiny and, and gray skin. So there you have it. <laughs> Did sure, you live just... in an old house? Um, this apartment was actually uh, above what used to be, uh, it was in an old Polish neighborhood or something like that. And there they used to have mm. a, a butcher downstairs. Uh, he mm. would sell out of the the lower front of this building. Hmm. So, yeah. So, I don't know. Weird. I started to say you should uh, uh, do some research into some of the uh, um, Polish mythology mm-hmm. of, of, ele- of. Yeah, of, of, of elementals, especially ones that may be associated with, you know, butcher shops or, you know, slaughter, you know, abattoirs, wow. things like mm-hmm. that. Wow. Oh, that's wild. I, I just, I'd never seen him before, never seen him since, and never seen anything like it. <laughs> when you said that, I was thinking actually of the Scottish brownie, or um, there's a Finnish version called the Tomtra, which are right. um, little little beings that are basically attached to um, families or older homes. So, yeah, that's pretty interesting. That's the, so weird. I just, <laughs> I just don't even know how to categorize it. Oh. <laughs> One of the things that I have noticed about uh, a lot of these types of experiences, and you know, and I've had a number of people, uh, you know, personally give me these details, is that a lot of times when somebody will see something like you know, take you know, uh, you Heidi for example, you know, your 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 story. When they see, um, you know, a, a, a definitely an, an unusual being or creature, a lot of times the creature will then notice that they're being seen and will look surprised. Like <laughs> he like, didn't look surprised at all. Well, but uh, I've had a lot of people will tell me that you know, like I mean, they'll yeah. be you know, like walking down the street or something, and you know, something will walk past them, obviously very bizarre, mm-hmm. and then will be shocked. Well, will look shocked, you know, that that they're being seen, and it just makes me wonder that you know, if these things aren't with us all the time, and that you know, some people just you know, uh, you know kind of you know have that ability to occasionally see these things, or if you're just in the right place in the right time. You know, uh, be able to see these things. Yeah, the because angle. yeah, yeah. The, you know, the angle that we see stuff. Because at one time I was in a crowd of people. Uh, gosh, I don't know, probably thirty, forty people, and there was a a, a diamond, like like if two pyramid bottoms, uh, flat sides were put together, a diamond UFO tumbled through the sky for like twenty minutes. I saw purple, and a handful of people saw a rich royal blue. I'm like, so is it our our perception? I, I don't know. But it was pretty interesting to me how we saw different things. Hmm. What about you, Nicole? What do you think? Um, well, I, <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, as far as these experiences go, I think sometimes there are certain beings that are attracted to certain people um, because they are more sensitive than others. Um, but you know, I don't know, like in the case of ghosts though, I think it it can vary. Um, I really don't know much about aliens to be fully honest with you. I definitely believe in the probability. I'm sure they happen, but I've just never, uh, had experience with that. But, um, definitely if you're more sensitive to these things, I feel like they have a a way of kind of finding you. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Of course now, you know, when we say, aliens on this show um uh, and, and and you know tim beckley and myself i mean we both agree that i mean we're just using a term for really a lack of a better term because you know there's no proof one way or the other that mm-hmm. you know you're dealing with uh, you know like extraterrestrials or whatever i mean you know more than likely you're probably dealing with something that wants you to think you know that uh, that they're extraterrestrials but well, you know, probably I, I don't I, outside of the space brothers i don't even know if they necessarily want us to think that uh they're from space. They don't. Uh, oh, sometimes I, they I, point. I, I don't know. Sometimes they sometimes they point up, 
but uh, you know, I don't know as if they necessarily uh, want us to, to. Maybe they can't define where they're from. Yeah, well, that could that could very well be. I mean, you know, but I mean, there have been cases, you know, well, like you know, like you said, well, they'll point to the sky. We're from we're from the inside of the tall man's hat. <laughs> Not a fun place to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Wild. Uh, uh, but but yeah, I mean, you know, I I think that a lot of these cases that you know that that we talk about and we, where we use the term alien, you know, I, there's there's probably a good possibility that we're dealing with the same kind of phenomena as all the other stuff that we've just been talking about. Mm, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, some some people will will call them tricksters. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, um, and yeah, I mean, some people have gone as far as the, you know, to say that they're, they're hungry ghosts yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or, or the, the gin, you know, that's, that's been a popular one that's, uh, that's been going around. <laughs> yeah. Very true. Yeah. Well, I mean, and you, you know, you look at, uh, uh, some of this, uh, you know, the old, uh, um, stories about the gin, I mean, that it's very reminiscent of a lot of the stuff that is going on today and unfortunately we are coming up to our bottom of the hour break so let's go ahead and go to that tim and when we come back we will finish up our conversation with nicole canfield and heidi hollis on exploring the bazaar so stay tuned for more i'm going to dust my hat off Now back to exploring the bazaar with two of the most electrifying researchers in the paranormal. Your hosts, Timothy Beckley and Tim Swartz. And welcome back to the final segment of Exploring the Bazaar. Tim, here it is. The uh, bottom of the hour just seems like uh, the show gets started and we've got less than a half hour to go. Where does the time go? Well, you know, we have to have Einstein on some night to, to ask him that, I think. <laughs> we have to get our Ouija board out to do that, I think. Uh, well, you know, we haven't had a a, a seance on the air. I wonder how that would go over. I, I, I know on, on other shows, they're very frightened about using the uh, uh, the uh, Ouija board. Uh, but I, I, had a, I had a bit of, um, uh, well, I, I had a, an experience with the Ouija board. I. I discussed that I think on the show we did a month mm-hmm. or so ago uh, about my uh, late friend uh, Vivian St. John, the wrestler, otherwise known as uh, Lady uh, Suzanne Miller, uh, and we had a, a, a rather uh, interesting uh, experience with a Ouija board that told us some things that were darn right uh, accurate, you know, and uh, uh, and then of course I fooled around with the Ouija board not so much in recent years because I get bored by it. I I, I kind of. Uh, uh, put that in the same category of uh, as gambling unless you're getting a message a minute or or pulling the slot machine in the quarters are, are coming out after a while uh, you just feel like yawning and walking away from it and and, and that that happens uh, a lot anything to do with sp- spirit you know manifestations let me look at these uh, tv shows where uh, they can't be real the spirit is not going to show up every time you uh, you know, uh, uh, walk across the, uh, the the bottom deck of the Queen uh, Elizabeth or the uh, uh, what's the what, what's the big hotel there that they all go to uh, in Colorado? The Shining. No. You know, the, yeah, I know that. Well, I was thinking about the uh, uh, the Waverly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. you know, I mean, uh, ghosts are ghosts are plenty. Well, I was in the Jerome, Arizona, uh, where there are more ghosts than there are actual uh, uh, humans uh, living there. I, well, my friend uh, is Sharla, who uh, uh, is a regular listener to the show and has, assists me in taking photographs uh, from time to time when we're on the uh, road. But uh, they had an interested, uh, interesting uh, uh, haunted town because most of the ghosts were of uh, uh, drunkards, hmm. uh, prospectors, and prostitutes. <laughs> uh, be, being, uh, in, in fact, there's one a uh, brothel, uh, you know, that's made up. To, it was originally a brothel a hundred or something years ago. Uh, uh, that uh, still uh, sees uh, has some ghosts in it, and they've recorded some um, uh, EVP. 
I'm not talking, I guess, real moaning and groaning. Uh, mm, ah. Oh, boy. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but okay, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, there, there, uh, there are ghosts and spirits and, and all that around us. But, you know, I wanted to ask, uh, Nicole, we, we, we just talked uh, uh, briefly during the um, uh, commercial break about ancestors. And I wasn't sure exactly what that is. And I asked her uh, probably a foolish question. Was that akin to shamanism? And she said, well, not exactly. So perhaps she would like to explain. Um, so what I had said was my spiritual practice is very um, centered around my ancestors. So I, I would say that shamanism is a worldwide um, piece of different like ancient cultures. It still s survives today in different forms and in different cultures. And yes, they could include um, ancestral worship or their, their ancestors in the practice. But I think shamanism in and of itself is something special. Um, shamans, you know, will travel to other realms and uh, learn how to heal people around them and bring messages from the other side. Um, but for me, I don't, I don't really do any of that. <laughs> Um, that I know of. I just, I feel a deep connection to my ancestors. I feel like um, something that's very tangible for me and my spirituality is the fact that my ancestors lived through me. And so I feel that it's very easy to reach out to them. And um, yeah, I call on them to protect me as far as my household, um, to protect me from any shadow beings or, um, mm -hmm. you know, other negative entities. So. Well, now, isn't, isn't that the basis of cannibalism? Ancestor that, uh, worship. Uh, well, yes. Uh, in, in some of the cultures, they would they would they would eat the flesh of uh, uh, of uh, uh, the, the, the people in their family and all after they were deceased because they sounds delicious. That they would, My yeah, word. Well, no, they they thought that they thought that they would pick up on the energy of that person and the knowledge and uh, and things along the, the that line. Yeah. Well, so, ancestral worship actually is. I mean, it dates back hundreds of thousands of years, but. In every ancient culture, there was some form of ancestor um, where where we honored our ancestors. I don't I, I don't know anything about cannibalism. <laughs> that scares me a little bit. Well, but that's um, the next well, book. Well, <laughs> yeah, right. well, well let, let, let me let me. Let, well, actually, Tim, what is our next uh, book uh, called? Alien Bloodlust. There you go. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, by by by, uh, by Scott uh, uh, Corrales. Uh, who's been a longtime uh, uh, associate uh, of ours? Now he's um, uh, traveled and investigated the uh, the chupacabra, which we're all familiar with. But we've gathered together a lot of other stories uh, that have to do with uh, uh, ultra terrestrials and and uh, uh, blood. I mean, uh, there have been cases in in South uh, America that um, we wrote about in UFO hostilities where. Uh, up to three or four hundred people in an entire village that had the blood drained or sucked uh, from them. I mean, not, uh, not to the point of uh, being, uh, uh, you know, well, I think a couple of them did uh, die mysteriously, but uh, uh, some of them had bite marks on their neck and on different parts of their uh, their uh, body. And the, uh, the objects were described as a cylinder uh, shaped, and they were coming down over this uh, uh, coastal town not too far from the um, uh, Amazon. And in fact, the Brazilian government was so intrigued by this, they actually uh, set up a um, uh, an observation uh, post, I guess you would call it, uh, uh, nearer on the beach. And I've seen some of the photographs that they, uh, they took over a period of, uh, I don't know, maybe six or eight months or a year. A very phenomenal phenomena. Uh, in the uh, the sky, and and then for some reason supposedly they closed down the um, uh, their uh, their project there, even though they were getting some very uh, uh, startling startling uh, uh, you know proof that these things were real. But of course, uh, nobody really believes that they closed it down. They just sort of went um, uh, underground. But uh, uh, there you talk about a negative uh, you know um, uh, aspect uh, of of. Uh, uh, this uh, phenomena. I mean, it, it has it has happened. We think about uh, just uh, you know animal mutilations and maybe the chupacabra, but uh, there are all uh, sorts of uh, weird things uh, that are uh, uh, going on. Uh, of course, uh, uh, going back through history, you also had the uh, 
succubus and the inc- uh, incubus, which would attack uh, people in the uh, in the dead of uh, uh, of night. And uh, of course, a lot of people now say that they're having uh, uh, night visitors and being abducted aboard UFOs and undergoing some of the same molestation and uh, uh, rituals uh, that have been reported as other phenomena throughout uh, the history of the uh, occult. It, it's all very strange and all very bizarre. Uh, only Tim Schwartz claims to have all the answers to it. And, uh, oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, well, and that, uh, um, that, that kind of brings me around, though, to, um, to a question to both of our guests, because we were talking about, uh, you know, like ghosts and hauntings and, and things like that. So when it comes to the shadow people and, you know, the hat man, what's the difference between, say, like a ghost and these entities? Um, the, the difference between a ghost and these are, it's just a, a world of difference. Mm-hmm. I, I remember in the, in the, the beginning when I was first putting word out there, it was a lot of poo pooing by ghost hunters. Oh, those are just the shadows of ghosts you're experiencing. You know, I'm like, well, wait till you see one because it, I have a good feeling you're going to see one. And luckily a lot of those uh, ghost hunters got back to me after they did experience them. And they're like, wow, what a difference. Very threatening, very intimidating. Their presence is very much about um, um, just sucking you dry. And and uh, one of their favorite pastime things to do is to get on your chest and, and choke you and uh, just make you be so fearful. Now, the one thing that, that I find um, really interesting, like shadow beings are wispy. They run away generally. But if you spot them and they spot you spotting them, they usually will charge you down. Um, it's 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 an intimidating game that they play, and um, they're they're really trying not to be seen. Hat man, he'll wait till you wake up. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> it's like <laughs> it, he's he's a different sort. He wants to be recognized. He wants you to give him respectful fear. Um, ghosts, they're nosy. They play games. They do silly things. I mean, yeah, they may be not the the nicest person, you know, and when they were alive, so they may smack you. They may play tricks on you. Um, but um, I, I believe behind every haunting, there is a shadow being. Believe it or not. Hmm. Uh, Nicole, what about you? Um, yeah, there's definitely a difference and from my experience with uh, shadow beings versus ghosts. Um, Ghosts are, well, for me, they've always been a little more subtle. <laughs> um, you can still feel their presence and they can be scary, but uh, my experience of shadow beings was always just sheer terror and waking up the next day and just being in complete disbelief and um, just hoping that I didn't have the experience again, you know, because it was just that frightening. So, um, yeah, they have this... this uh, energy of domination. They just want to scare you. And, um, I definitely believe they feed off of that energy. Well, now, do you think that there is a difference now? Um, our friend, uh, uh, Paul Eno, uh, he has investigated, uh, poltergeist cases. There was one in particular that, that he investigated where he actually, uh, the uh, whatever these beings were, they started to um, attack a, a, a teenage girl who was the focus of their intent in the house, and he stood in between them and actually grabbed one, and he said that it felt like uh, – the bones are almost like, uh, uh, how do you put it to him? I think he said it was like, like, like bird bones almost, mm. but that, but that this was an actual, at least temporarily physical thing, but he was under the impression that these things were parasites, that they were out to create a charged atmosphere of fear and then that they, they they would feed off of it, but they mm-hmm. weren't ghosts in the traditional sense that mm-hmm. they were, you know, like somebody's, you know, Grandpa Floyd who had passed away and is now coming back and, you know, yeah. haunting the place for whatever reason. Big difference. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I agree. Well, I mean, so do you think do you think the shadow people, you know, fall into that category or or the hat man or you know whatever that the, that these are parasites 
that somehow you know are are able to you know get their jollies or you know get their i mean uh, we we are their 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 food their source of energy <laughs> mhm yeah mm-hmm. i would believe that man i uh, definitely suck off the energy of us um feeding thriving converting possessing that's a uh, raping biting scratching kicking I, they're they're horrible uh, anything and everything you can imagine for them to do to a person they have done it's um it's brutal wow. stuff and you know sometimes people are fortunate to just experience it once but if it's something that is really got its focus on you i've had people write me who have had 40 years of uh, infiltration oh, oh. oh yeah we we had a case um that we wrote up in the uh, UFO hostilities book about a, uh, uh, a young woman who lived in the Philippines and uh, she reported that she was being bitten and scratched. And uh, uh, of course the authorities thought she was just either making it up or scratching or, you know, herself, uh, uh, you know, when nobody was looking, but they, they actually witnessed it, uh, you know, with their own eyes and they even put her in, in a locked cell thinking that somehow this would ward off the uh, uh, demonic uh, forces. And she still was uh, uh, attacked um, yeah. uh, by them. In fact, Tim, did we have a lady on uh, who, who was uh, raised in the Philippines or born in the Philippines who had an incident where her father might actually have committed suicide after seeing some uh, a creature that was trying to get into the house? It was um, kind of almost like a, a, like a mothman. Type, mm. yeah, type of of creature that uh, would hover outside of his um, window, his office yeah, the, window his, the yeah. office window. Well, yeah, his office was at his house, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was second floor though. Yeah, it was the second floor. I think, right, so right. It? Well, she she found out later though that uh, you know because his he was you know he was a doctor and that uh, his his facility in the lower part of the house that mm. he had a lot of human remains, uh, baby, uh, you know, fetuses in jars yeah. and things like Ooh. that, which, you know, in their culture, that's, that's pretty taboo. Well, you know, at, at Tim, I was just thinking, uh, we have, uh, a Halloween coming up, uh, shortly, uh, perhaps we should uh, get her to come on, uh, one of the segments and tell that story again, because it's certainly one of the more frightening words that we have heard, uh, uh, in a, you know, a first person, uh, uh, experience. Yeah, that 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 was that was that was a, a good story and uh, um, you know frightening and sad at the same time. I, in fact, the uh, her father, I believe, uh, uh, committed suicide. Possibly, I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'll have to look uh, well, uh, it up again. <laughs> I, 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 I got I got an interesting uh, phenomena that I've had several people write me who have attempted suicide, and you know they wake up in the hospital and they're strapped down to the bed and uh have the hat man be the first one to greet him yeah. and w- one one person said he got within an inch of his face and brought his claw like hand up in an it's showing like an inch and he said i was this close to having you and then he disappeared <laughs> Yeah, I'm not really. sleeping tonight. Seriously, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, you know, it's interesting, Nicole. You're an o, you're a nurse. I'm an OT. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I guess it's a. Uh, I don't know. It's it's wild. We go into the yeah. medical field as uh, paranormal folks. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> See, now, now, I would think that uh, having an experience like that, okay, you try to commit suicide, you know, you wake up and there's the hat man, you yeah. know, say something. I would think that that would j- have just the opposite effect, that I, I would stay then on the very straight and narrow for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've, you know, I, I had a, oh gosh, I'm so bad with names, but I had a lady that was on my show once and she writes books all a near-death experience and everything is love and light and fluffy. And here I deal with demons. So I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, near-death experience. How about the negative ones? And she goes, oh, well, interesting enough, these people, they see a man in a hat and a suit that have <laughs> the negative experiences. I said, that's my boy. Yeah, let's talk about those. <laughs> so crazy. We have, we have a couple. I, I mean, I don't know them personally, but we have a couple. Well, there's a haunted cemetery. Uh, rural, it's uh, the Albany Rural Cemetery, Albany, New York, uh, where the men in black have been seen. 
black cars, demon dogs, and they even have uh, a couple that fly over the tombstones uh, wearing their pajamas and carrying lit candles. <laughs> now, I, I don't know as if they're uh, particularly demonic, uh, but we have... Uh, uh, we we have a, a a lady friend of ours who comes on the show from time to time. In fact, we should have her on Halloween as well. Uh, well the MIB lady we call her, uh, Claudia Cunningham, mm-hmm. and she's got uh, some uh, great stories about some uh, a very phenomenal uh, ghost. In fact, uh, the uh, uh, state house uh, in in Albany, you know, where the governor. I don't know if he lives there, but uh, you know, resides or they have their meetings and stuff like that. Uh, is haunted. And I guess they've, they've talked about it. It's been on TV and stuff like that. So, you know, in the old days, if you had a, a haunting, you you didn't want anybody to discuss it because you thought uh, it would, um, you know, ruin your business. And and now people realize, well, there might be a crowd outside if you got a good enough uh, haunting. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, True. I, I, I suppose. But, uh, uh, okay, so this is... Uh, where what is it? I mean, is there any? Are there any new phenomena that's developing uh, out there? I mean, what's the what's the latest uh, craze? Would you say, Heidi? Is there anything that you see um, uh, yeah, on the um, horizon here? Well, it, the behavior of the Hat Man, I guess you could say, he is. Mm. Um, he's he's really he's taken a lot of people out of their bodies. A lot of astral projecting going on, and uh, trying to drag these people away and they're fighting fist fighting with the hat man i've gotten a lot of those lately so behavior is changing that's for sure fist fighting i mean if mm-hmm. you hit the hat man does it do you feel him or does it does it sound you know like uh if you <laughs> does smell, it land <laughs> yeah 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 i, I mean or does, well, your hand go, does your hand go through him you know i'll tell you okay so like i have not had to confront that man physically myself but literally, probably a month ago or so, I, I, I'm I having a regular dream. And he appeared in between the conversation I was having with somebody. And I grabbed him from the top of his head on the hat. And I was like, wow, it, he is solid black. And I could feel the edge of this hat. And I took the hat and I shoved it down to his face and pushed him down to the ground and said, I don't like you and I never will. He's very solid. He's very wow. solid. Yeah. All right. Hey, we're we're um, uh, coming upon the uh, um, midnight hour, and we're all <laughs> going to turn into we're all going to turn into pumpkins or something to that effect. So I do want nice. to go around the uh, I, I do want to go around the room uh, one last time here at the KCOR uh, Radio uh, Studios and uh, uh, tell us uh, Heidi and uh, 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 where people can find you, and, and the same uh, for you, Nicole. But let's start out with Heidi. What's your uh, website, your uh, podcast, and all those. Um, the things. best way to contact me is through my main website, which is HeidiHollis.com. Um, I am hosting three radio shows now. I just started a new one called The Outrageous Show with myself and Samantha Goldberg. Um, that's every Monday, uh, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Uh, Central Standard Time on LNMRadioNetwork.com. I also have the Outlander show on there, and then I'm on iHeartRadio on After Hours AM. So, oh, um, there you I, go. And are, yeah, are you working? Are you working any new books, uh, Heidi? I have a new book coming out called "The Other F Word." So the other F Word dot com on that thing called faith that the other Tim doesn't like. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, yeah, yeah, no, I, I can, you know, I can be, I can I'm be like, proven, I can be proven, I can be proven uh, very wrong. I'm uh, Nicole, I made it on, I made it on comics and the other F Word. So yeah. All oh, right, and, and Nicole, where do where do we find you again? Okay, so uh, you can find me on my website, otherworldlyoracle.com. You can also find me through Facebook under author Nicole Canfield. And I have a group on Facebook, Otherworldly Oracle, where we discuss uh, the paranormal and the spiritual and how that all melds together. And you have books? I do. You can find four of my books on Amazon. Just look up Nicole Canfield and they'll pop up. All right. Well, uh, speaking of books, don't forget to... uh uh, go to uh, conspiracyjournal.com and uh, subscribe. Uh, we put out a, a, a weekly uh, n- a newsletter, and I'm uh, 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 that's on the internet. And I'm working on a printed copy of the uh, uh, conspiracy uh, d- journal that we do a couple of times a, a year for 
those that are not on the uh, uh, internet or would like to feel uh, paper and ink, which is uh, you know a rarity uh, these uh, uh, days. And uh, of course, our YouTube uh, the ch- channel is open for all to view, th- which would be uh, Mr. UFO's Secret Files, thanks to uh, uh, Peter Bernard, uh, who is uh, our um, YouTube um, uh, architect. Yeah, YouTube guru. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's that, that's the word. Uh, and and Tim, uh, what are you uh, up to these? Uh, well, right right now, I've been uh, I've been promoting quite a bit uh, our our newest book, the uh, uh, Screwed by the Aliens. That's uh, oh, even yeah. though the even though the title is pretty uh, uh, salacious, uh, uh, people just love this subject. I've been getting a lot of uh, requests to uh, come on and talk about it. Well, it it it, it does have a a, a double uh, a meaning. Uh, but you have to buy the uh, the, the book to uh, to see what it uh, is, and of course our our blog uh, uh, you'll want to uh, get to as well. Uh, or if you just go to uh, here we go, go to my Amazon authors page, Timothy Beckley, and the blogs are all there. All and right. uh, thank you uh, one and all for being uh, with us this evening. And uh, Tim, I'll be uh, talking to you before next week. We've got some exciting shows coming up. You've been listening to Exploring the Bazaar with hosts Timothy Beckley and Tim Swartz. They're taking back the night by jetting non-stop across the cosmos in search of the truly bizarre and totally unexplained with you as their co-pilot. Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern on the KCOR Digital Radio Network. For more information on exploring the bazaar and hosts Timothy Beckley and Tim Swartz, check out their KCOR digital radio network. Follow their YouTube channel at MRUFO1100. Exploring the bazaar.